hi guys I am so excited to be filming this video okay anyway so uh, on my Greek channel I started a series called criminal makeup and obviously it is inspired by Bailey Syrian I will leave her channel link down below and what she does is she applies makeup and says some creepy stories uh, mostly uh, true crime stories which is what I am also very obsessed with I am so obsessed with true crime like for years and I just watched a documentary on the ID channel which is the best channel ever it's my favorite channel like there's nothing better than it anyway <laughs> and it was a case that I have never heard about and that is so weird because like I listen to podcasts videos like documentaries on TV on mo like movies Netflix everywhere that has to do with true crime and I'm like how the hell did I miss out on this case because this case case this case has a lot of just like plots and twists and it's like really interesting obviously it's a true story and it's nothing to laugh about if I make jokes here and there it's just because I have black humor and just want to like make this enjoyable for you guys to watch I don't want to seem like I am making fun of the victim or their family because like the only true victim in this case is Gregory Smart I just wanted to make sure that I got his name right so just all of my condolences to the families uh, who have lost to the families to the family of Gregory Smart and uh, yeah, let's begin. So the story starts in May 1st, 1990. That day, Pamela Smart, who is married to Gregory Smart, she comes home from work one day late at night and she finds her husband dead and her home very messed up. It basically seemed like a robbery gone wrong. Pamela was instantly like with the sight of her husband on the floor, just blood, you know. She was shocked. She ran to the neighbors to uh, ask for help because she apparently, as she said, she had no idea what to do. She got really terrified and she asked the neighbors for help. So the neighbors called the police as you do. Police came and their house was like, the drawers were moved, opened, like their stuff was everywhere. At first sight, it really did seem like a robbery gone wrong. But I forgot to mention that they didn't steal Gregory's wallet. It was right there and they didn't steal anything valuable like TVs or anything like that. But then during the investigation, a kid's father went to the police and reported that his 38 caliber pistol might have been the murder weapon because Gregory Smart was shot point blank on the head. Which is like, in my opinion, I got you way to kill somebody. It's not like oh it just happened you know it's like really like just that there like like really revenge to me I don't know Vance JR as they called him Vladimir's uh, father so that was this kid's father that went to the police talked about his pistol and he said that he went hunting or something and he remembered that's not the way he left his pistol he remembered that his pistol was like dirty up and just not so clean and then he found his pistol looking brand new cleaned so he was like okay somebody used my pistol and that's really weird so he gave it up to the police and then the police started thinking of this as a murder investigation and not as a robbery gone wrong. 
During this, um, Pamela Smart, which is Gregory Smart's wife, we talked about her in the beginning, she found Gregory dead. Everybody and the police were saying that she was very calm and she didn't cry, she didn't seem sad and distressed of uh, her husband, like she just found her husband dead and she went to the police station like all oh, makeup, hair and done and everything and she did a bunch of interviews and the interviewer who interviewed her at first he went to her house and she said she wanted to clear things up about her husband's death and she insisted that it was a robbery gone wrong and to that, only that like, just put it in your head, you just found your husband dead and you're just so sure that it was a robbery gone wrong and the police are thinking that it might have been a murder and you're just like, no, it was a robbery like, I don't want this to be a murder if you really were innocent, wouldn't you want to maybe find out if it was a murder? like, if somebody wanted to kill your husband, wouldn't you want to find out who it was? Like, why would you insist and go on TV and like do interviews and just paper covers and everything claiming that, oh, it was just a robbery? So yeah, and the interviewer said at some point, which literally shocked me, he said that they went into the kitchen of Pamela's house and she was telling him how that specific day it was one year their one year anniversary with Gregory uh, marriage anniversary and she still had the top part of the cake of the wedding cake and she had it in the freezer and she told him wouldn't it be better if you like got a shot of me like taking the cake out of the freezer like wouldn't it look like more dramatic or whatever she told him something like that and the reporter was like how are you f first of all how are you so chill he said she was very like chill and just blank stare and she was also like dressed up and everything she told him how to do his job and to like make it more dramatic So, Pamela Smart, her job was, she worked in a high school and she had like a consultant's job and she was doing a program that was about confidence or something. Anyway, and she befriended her students and she had four specific students that were her bodies, like they became friends, they shot like a video about orange juice, whatever. They just became her friends, I guess. And those students were Patrick Pete, as they called him, Randall, Vance J.R. Latimer, which is the guy's father that gave the pistol, Raymond Fowl, and Cecilia Hears. Keep those names in mind. Then it came out that Pamela, the at the time 22 year old teacher, had a relationship, was having an affair with William Billy, as I will refer to him throughout this video. Billy, her student, who was 15. And she was 22. She was his teacher. That's not pedo at all. So Billy said that he liked uh, Pamela. He fancied her ass. And then it just it just all went from this program, uh, hanging out with them very often outside of school. So Pamela said that. Her husband didn't come home one day and then he came the next morning, the next day and he told her that he was with somebody else and that 
that night he cheated on her and that he was sorry and whatever and Pamela she said she lost her trust she lost her confidence and everything she had a reason to be mad at him then later with her students they shot a video uh, the video that I told you about with orange juice and stuff and Pamela said after that video she started having feelings and she started liking Billy she started fancying him back and then she gave Cecilia Cecilia Pierce, the girl who was her student, she was 16 and they became like best friends and they were together all the time and they were talking all the time like Cecilia said she felt that she was really friends with uh, Pamela and she gave a note to Cecilia to give to Billy and that note said that she likes Billy and she thinks of him all the time and she was asking him do you think of me at all because I think of you all the time and do you like me and all of that like a fucking child that is a 22 year old woman passing a like a little letter to her student to give to another student Moving on, she gave that note to Billy and Billy got really excited because he was like, oh my god, like, she likes me too, I mean, I liked her from the beginning that I saw her and now she likes me, I, like, how cool is that, you know? And he got excited. And then one day Pamela asked Billy if he had ever seen the movie, like, what movie is that? Nine and a half weeks. Um, I think that was the movie. Anyway, I have no idea what that movie is. I've never watched it. But apparently it's very sexual. I don't know. It might be a porno movie. I have no freaking idea. But yeah, it was very sexual supposedly. And Billy said, no, I have never watched that movie. So one day when Pamela's husband, Gregory, was out of town, she invited Billy in her house to watch that movie. That is not gonna lead to good things, but okay. So obviously Billy freaking runs and they watch the movie and that's what Billy says. She leaned in and she asks him, aren't you gonna kiss me? And then he kissed her. Obviously, and then they ended up in her bedroom that she had with her husband and Then she got dressed in like sexy lingerie and like underwear and shit and then she came out of the bathroom and Billy was obviously very excited and then she did a strict tease that was like done the same in the movie like she tried to make that movie like reality and stuff and then he said that he went he stopped her for a moment and then he went downstairs to get some ice cubes and like do a scene that was with ice cubes just like in the movie I don't know what the scene was about but I'm scared to find out that's what Billy is saying Barbara obviously she's denying everything but she's not denying that she they had sex but she's denying all the other saucy saucy stuff so yeah Billy actually said that that was the very first kiss that he had and he had it with Pamela and it was the very first time that he had ever had sex obviously he's 15 so I mean that's believable that it's his first time so Pamela actually said that at some point she loved him and Pamela said that she was happy with Billy because he gave her attention and she felt like he listened to her so then after JR's dad gave the pistol to the police 
the police obviously have found out that that pistol has been used recently and it matched the bullet hole in poor Gregory's wound in his head. So then after that happened, a anonymous tip came into the police saying that teenager Cecilia Pierce actually knew all about the murder and she knew who did it. So then the police call Cecilia to go into the station to interview her and she was petrified like she went in with her mother and she just said like she had no idea or whatever she claimed that she had no idea and then she just left she's like i have to go to driver's ed i have to go to my driving lessons and she just left and the lead investigator who was there he kind of like pushed uh cecilia and her mother was like don't talk to my daughter like that whatever and um, then Cecilia said that she has to leave and go to driver's ed, so she left. Then Cecilia saw on TV that they were talking about arresting another person and that another person was gonna be Cecilia. And she saw it and she started realizing, holy crap, they're gonna arrest me, like this is getting real. Then Cecilia kind of cracked. She said that Billy had was friends with Barbara, his teacher, and also had sexual relations. They were like, okay, how do you know that they had sex? And she was like, I actually run into them like one day when they were having sex. So apparently they were having sex everywhere, like in her house, like in a in the freaking field. I don't freaking know. So then uh, Cecilia, she said that she had heard Pamela saying to Billy that she is either gonna take a divorce or she's gonna kill her husband, Gregory. You might be thinking like, okay, why would she do that? Only because he cheated on her and she's mad at him. Okay, she's having an affair of her own. Like, why would she kill him? Well. Gregory had three life insurances in his name and she's married to him so obviously when he dies everything that he owns goes to her so three life insurances total was one hundred and forty thousand dollars and when he died all of that money went to Barbara so that is pretty much why people kill Three reasons. Revenge, sex, and money. That's why all murders happen. So Cecilia said she heard Pamela saying this to her and Billy and she was like, okay, I... Cecilia said that she knew Barbara was serious when she was saying this, but she never really thought she, that she was gonna kill her husband like she thought okay she's probably just gonna get a divorce like any normal person who wants to get out of a marriage so then Cecilia because obviously she didn't want to go to jail she agreed to wearing a wire and going to Barbara's like to find Barbara I don't know where they went but yeah and to just try to get information out of her to see if she was the one who killed her husband and she went to find Barbara and Cecilia said that as soon as Barbara saw her she went in for a hug and she tried to hug her and she got really scared she's like oh my god like she's gonna feel the wire and the cassette that they have like recording everything but she didn't feel anything so then she went in and talked to Cecilia and she pretty much was telling Cecilia not to admit anything because she's gonna seem like she was in on this and they're all gonna go to jail all meaning 
Billy and his two other friends, her two other students. So, and she was telling her like a bunch of incriminating things, like a bunch of things that made her sound guilty. And the investigator said that Cecilia's wire, like, kind of like had problems and they couldn't hear her well. So, Thank God that they had a cassette with them and the cassette was recording everything and they could hear what Barbara was telling Cecilia afterwards. So afterwards when police got the tape, they were like, oh shit, we have this bis because they just wanted more and more evidence not to just arrest her, they wanted to convict her make sure that she was guilty and that she could go to jail and make sure that it's her that she did it. I freaking love the police and the prosecutor of this case it's like so... the police is just such a badass in this case and I'm like oh snap I was watching it and my mom was like doing something else on her phone and I was screaming and she was like wow so on August 1st, 1990, Detective Daniel Pelletier yeah, found Pamela, Miss Smart, in the parking lot of the school that she worked in. Pamela sees the investigator and the police and just everyone there and she's like, what's up? And then Detective Daniel goes, well Pam, guess what? We have good news for you and bad news for you. The good news is we've solved your husband's murder. The bad news is you're under arrest, this. Like, I just, I wanna be a detective for like a day and just do something like that. Mr. Detective Daniel Pelletier or something, sorry for mispronouncing your last name, you are a badass. And then Pamela obviously goes, what for? Like, what are you arresting me for? And he's like, first degree murder. Biz. Okay, he didn't say biz, but... And the police arrested the other kids and they all claimed that Barbara told them to do it and that obviously she was in on it. The funny thing is that Billy told her to do it with a knife because that will make no sound like the neighbors won't hear them and she insisted on not killing her husband with a knife because apparently that's gonna make a lot of mess and she has white furniture so that's gonna like go everywhere and she doesn't want to ruin her furniture so then the kids told the investigators with detail what Barbara told them to do and obviously she claims that yeah, I had an affair with a 15 year old but she didn't kill her husband so yeah, then they go to trial and they take all the kids on the stand and they say their stories like Barbara, she's the mastermind of all of this and obviously they're just teenagers and they were led into doing all of this and manipulating them and just brainwashing them into doing that who would you believe? like a 15 year old Billy especially, or the teacher who just everything points to her, like everything. I forgot to mention also that the kids in the beginning, they wouldn't say anything, like they just had their mouths shut and they had them, the police had them in custody, which means they had them in the station for, in jail for quite some time and they wouldn't say a word then the prosecutor I love that prosecutor oh my god I forget his name right now he's like okay then we will judge them as adults which means that they will get a life sentence and they will pretty much die 
in jail and they will no, have no chance for parole. Parole means that they will have no chance to like get this to court again and just maybe they'll go out innocent. Just another chance, I guess, that's what parole means. When shit got real and they saw that everything is like, oh my god, this is getting like really serious, they just started talking like, like little birds and they just said the truth and they said that um, Barbara told them to kill her husband and that she was gonna give them some of the money that she got from his life insurance and that's what they did. So yeah, JR got his father's pistol, Barbara left the back door open for them, they went in from the back door, they started messing up the whole place, make it look like it's been a robbery, and then her husband came home and found them obviously like what the hell. Bill said that Greg was like what's going on, he wasn't like violent or whatever, he was surprised by Greg's reaction. Then they kind of got in a physical fight with Greg, then Billy was the one who pulled the trigger. Obviously he's, he's the boyfriend of his wife. He said that he froze for a moment. He was thinking like, oh my god, what am I doing? But he thought that he doesn't do it, Barbara is not gonna love him or just you know, he was manipulated into that. He said, God forgive me, and then he pulled the trigger and he killed Gregory Smart. The one thing that was revealed later that blows my mind, the audacity of that woman before the kids did all of that and committed the murder and just broke broke into the house. She actually gave them a ride. JR, the guy who got the pistol from his dad, he actually told his grandma to drop off her car, to like drop off the car in his house and the grandma didn't come. So JR and the others call Barbara up and are like, hey, we're doing this for you. You might as well come and pick us up. So she did, and the kids said that Barbara, while they were in the car, she was telling them, I don't want to know like the details, I don't know, just do what you gotta do, like just don't use a knife, I don't want the mess, I have white furniture. Actually, Billy, while he was saying all of this, he was crying, and it was very obvious that, in my opinion, he was telling the truth, like he was very distraught and he said that, you know, he was describing everything in detail and he was like, that was the first time I was ever kissed and that was the first time I had ever had sex. And the prosecutor, the reason I love him, it's like he's so sassy, like he's so determined when Billy was doing his confessing and everything on the stand, Billy said something along the lines of yeah, they had sex that night. He didn't clearly say we had sex. So the prosecutor like, so you guys had sex? He's like, yes. So sexual intercourse, you had sexual intercourse, yes. <laughs> he was like, he kept on going just to get the clearest picture out, just so kind of sassy. So Barbara's defense, she got one of the best criminal lawyers in her area and her defense was that she was a part of a conspiracy and that everybody is against her and the media, it's the media's fault and they are making her look really bad. And maybe if she wasn't going around doing interviews in the first place because she liked the attention, maybe the media wouldn't be so into her. And the recordings supposedly had edited in a different way to make her seem guilty from the recordings that Cecilia had gotten. Just a bunch of, in my opinion, bullshit. Then Barbara goes on the stand. She admitted on having an affair with the kid. She admitted also on doing a lot of mistakes throughout this whole case. 
there's a bug. Can you like leave? I'm filming, you're interrupting. She went on the stand, admitted to a few things, but didn't admit to the murder itself. And they were awaiting the jury to see what they were gonna say. And the jury convicted Pamela guilty in all accounts. Conspiracy to commit murder. And Pamela is in jail for the rest of her life and she said that she will actually come out of jail in 9,999 in 99... in 99... in 99.99 So... like we don't even know the world might explode until that time Yeah, she's definitely dying in jail and she got no chance of parole hearing guilty 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 in the courtroom her mother and her father like started like cr screaming and crying and everything and Pamela said that she felt like she was stabbed every time she heard the word guilty and the kids actually who are not kids they actually served a few years and now they're out and she says that the murderers of her husband are out and she shouldn't be in there. Prosecutor told her that if she actually admitted to doing it, she would actually get the chance of parole and less sentence. And she's like, well, I didn't do it. So like, why would I admit to doing something that I didn't do? So yeah, guys, this was the story and make of it what you will. In my opinion, justice was served and she seems to be like a really good manipulator and she seems to be able to make people think that she's innocent. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you like this new series, Criminal Makeup, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Be careful out there.